To solidify our understanding of the gravitational potential energy, let's do another example. Let's say we have a one kilogram object, <coughs> excuse me, on the surface of the Earth, and let's move it into space at a height of 500 kilometers, and let's assume we don't worry about the kinetic energy or anything like that, just simply what energy would it take to lift it up 500 kilometers? Of course, physically that would not be possible, but just for the sake of doing this example, let's try and figure that out. So the work done to do that is equal to the energy that it would have over there minus the energy that it has down here. So it's equal to the potential energy at the orbit, at the height, uh, minus the potential energy it has on the surface of the Earth. Okay, so what is the potential energy at this height? Well, the definition is, it is minus G M, big M, divided by the position of that, which would be equal to, uh, let's say, um, the radius of the Earth plus the height. And then we subtract from that the energy that it has down on the Earth, because the energy here should be greater than the energy down there. Now, that's a little confusing sometimes, because the energies are always expressed in negative quantities. But even though they express the negative quantities, you know the potential energy there is greater than the potential energy down here. So we subtract from that the minus gm big M divided by the radius of the Earth. Okay. That difference should be the work required to put that object in space. Now all we have to do is figure out what those are. So this is equal to minus g m big M over r earth plus h, and minus times the minus is plus g m big M over the radius of the Earth. Now we can go ahead and plug in the numbers. So this is equal to minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Multiply times the mass, which is 1, mass of the Earth, 5.98, times 10 to the 24th, all divided by uh, the rays of the Earth plus H, that would be uh, 6378000 plus 500,000. Okay, so that's the energy that it would have when it is in orbit. We subtract from that the potential energy it has on the surface of the Earth which is actually, we need to add that now, so it would be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times 1, times 5.98, times 10 to the minus oh, plus 24, all divided by, uh, that would now be just the orbit of, uh, not the orbit, but the radius of the Earth. All right, so let's calculate, calculate those individually. I'm doing it individually instead of factoring out what's common so they give you a better understanding of what's going on. So taking the first number here, so 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24 divided by 6878000 equals, and converting it to that, so that would be, this is equal to minus 5.8 times 10 to the seventh, and of course that would be joules, because we're looking for energy here, potential energy, so that's joules. And then we add to that, plus that quantity right there, 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24th, divided by 6378000 equals, and converting it to scientific notation, so that would be plus 6.25, okay, 5 times 10 to the 7 joules. So now notice that this number here, the absolute value of this number is smaller than the absolute value number of that, so the negative number is smaller than the positive number, so we end up with a positive result. Does that make sense? Sure enough, it's the work required to bring something from here to there, and that should have to be positive work. So it looks like, at least sign-wise, we're okay. So take that number and divide, uh, subtract from that, so minus 5.8 uh, e to the 7 equals, and so that gives us a difference of, difference would be 4.5 times 10 to the 6 joules. So that would be the energy required to take a one kilogram object and give it the additional potential energy to raise it up 500 kilometers above the Earth. And that's how you must work with the gravitational potential energy. It's a little bit different than working with the potential energy the way you were used to when you said it was equal to mgh. So be careful that you start with the basic concept and then plug in the numbers and don't be confused by the positive and negative signs when you do it.